So if you've been watching a lot of tech news lately, or even the regular news, you may know that Google is really pushing their Manifest V3 as of late. And what that is, is it's being marketed as a way to make browser add-ons safer, more efficient, and compliant with modern APIs. But it also messes with some features that many extensions like ad blockers rely on. With Google's stance against ad blockers on many other platforms, especially on YouTube as of late, it kind of points to the fact that maybe Manifest V3 is specifically targeting a lot of ad blockers and making them a lot less efficient or viable for use. Now there's no official word that that is the case, but it does seem to point to that a little bit. Now the largest ad blocker uBlock Origin has already become listed as unsupported and the developer suggests you either switch to another browser, use or try to find another ad blocker, or use his uBlock Origin Lite, which is Manifest V3 compatible, but it does not the same level of ad blocking that uBlock Origin does, and he says that you can't really compare the two very well. Now, this is not going to immediately affect other browsers, but it will affect them if they switch from V2 to V3, which is probably a lot more likely on Chromium-based browsers, but as long as those browsers decide to continue supporting V2, you will still be able to use things like uBlock Origin, but as soon as the browser drops support for V2 and just switches to V3, they're also gonna be affected. But as of right now, this is just affecting Chrome itself. A slight correction here, I am by no means a browser expert, but looking into it a little bit further, it seems like when browsers do decide to go from V2 to V3, some of them are gonna use their own uh, manifest V3 implementation that is gonna include the additional features that ex extensions like uBlock Origin require to work properly. Um, so it's really, really gonna depend. Time will tell which browsers are going to keep those extra features alive when they do switch over to V3. And we're just gonna have to wait and see for the most part. Now, as I mentioned, Chromium-based browsers, if you didn't know, there are two main foundations for browsers. There's Chromium-based browsers and there's Firefox-based browsers. Chromium-based browsers like Chrome itself, but also ones like Opera, which I'm sure you've seen, which is gamer and customization focused. You have Arc, which is very customization focused and it looks really nice. You have Edge, which is built by Microsoft and has a lot of their features built into it as well. You have Vivaldi, which was co-founded by one of the Opera co-founders before Opera was sold off. You have Thorium, which is extremely performance focused. And then you have some free open source options like Brave, which is very much privacy focused. Now, personally, Firefox and its forks are what I have been using um, the last couple of years, especially. I've been using Firefox as my main browser for a very long time. And last year I actually switched over to one of their forks, um, which is just like all of those Chromium browsers I just mentioned. They are a browser that use Firefox as its foundation and built up their own code. And there are a lot of forks out there that are available to you. For example, LibreWolf, which is extremely privacy focused. There's Mercury, which is developed by the same person who makes Thorium. It is also performance focused, just like Thorium is. Waterfox is available, which allows Chromium extensions. And that's probably one of its biggest leg ups on the other competition. And then Florp, which is really, really customization focused. Now there's also two options that are not technically forks, they're just like script tweaks that still use Firefox as a whole, but they kind of just adjust it to be more privacy focused. And those would be BetterFox and ArkinFox. BetterFox is much more compatible, whereas ArkinFox really locks down the privacy stuff as much as possible. Now, if you're currently using Chrome and you wanna switch to one of these other browsers, whether it's the Chromium ones or the Firefox based ones, it's usually pretty simple. Upon installation, a lot of these browsers will either during the installation or on first startup will bring up a prompt to ask you if you want to import data from other browsers. This will import things like history and bookmarks. Things like extensions, however, you're gonna have to go ahead and do like a side-by-side -side and just find the extensions that you use or the ones that you wanna continue using and find them on the new platform. If you're using the Chromium based ones, they are mostly gonna be in the Chrome store. And if you're using the Firefox ones, that's gonna be mostly in the Firefox store. Now, if you don't get a pop-up during installation or first startup, 
All of these browsers have their own web page that will show you and guide you through the process of importing those things from the other browsers into the new browser on installation. And they'll also help you with initial setup and stuff like that as well. Now, as I mentioned, I decided on floor last year. I don't remember exactly when, but I've been using it for well over a year now. I'm super happy with it. I'm really happy with the customization I've been able to do. I'm really happy with the level of privacy. They update it basically on uh, every four weeks, basically on the nose, really great. Um, it has been an easy change for me, especially from another Firefox browser. It was really easy to bring all that stuff over. I still have myself logged into a Firefox account, so it brought over my extensions and stuff. It was really easy to use, but you don't have to log into that stuff if you don't want to, which is really nice. And yeah, Florp has been my choice. Now also on mobile, I do use the Firefox mobile browser as my mobile browser. I really do like it. It has continued to improve year over year. Um, it is really, really great. I really like it now. I have ne almost never used the Chrome one unless something is not properly working in the Firefox one. Um, the best part about the Firefox mobile browser is that it supports extensions on mobile. So I have ad blockers and everything on my mobile browser as well. So even when I'm not in my house being everything funneled through pie hole and stuff, I can still block all of my ads using an ad blocker on the browser, which is great. And I'm really happy about that as well. So based on all this information, I'm really curious, what browsers are you currently using? Are you interested in using any of the browsers that I mentioned today? And if so, I would love to hear all of that information down in the comment section below. I'm really curious. A lot of these browsers do really good things for different people and everybody has different use cases and uses the internet differently. So all of these kind of appeal to people for different reasons. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys are using or what you're interested in using. Now, if you're gonna use baseline Firefox, possibly the forks, you're gonna to have to check and see if the forks include this setting or not. If they don't, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Florp doesn't include this setting, but if you are using Firefox, I highly suggest taking off the new advertiser setting that they just put in there. A lot of people were upset about it. It's very easy to opt out of, but unfortunately it is by default opt in. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and go to your settings. You're gonna to go to privacy and security. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you get to website advertising preferences and you're going to uncheck the allow websites to perform privacy preserving ad measurements and this is basically allowing websites to collect data on you turn that one off it's a good privacy setting to have off don't know why they did that it's they're getting a lot of flack for it we'll see if they end up backtracking on it at all but i did want to outline that one as well and with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any of the other videos where I talk about ways and software that you can use to improve your computer experience, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.